Hey everybody, welcome to the 185th episode of Super Joystick Radio, a weekly gathering of friends here to talk about all things video games. My name is Andy Halder and I'm joined by one of my favorite party members, Justin D. Welcome everybody. Today we'll be discussing Microsoft's potential acquisition of Discord, highlights from the latest ID at Xbox Indie Showcase, and Lawn Mowing Simulator? But first, what have we been playing? Justin, you want to take us off? Yeah, so um, I picked up uh, It Takes Two on Friday when it came out, and it is a co-op dream. It is so much fun. Uh, it's probably the best experience of video gaming that I've You've had, had in your entire the- life? Well, no, not not necessarily <laughs> that, but I, I was going to finish uh, saying co-op wise, like the, probably the best experience I've had playing with another person. Um, and I got to share this with my wife, which is really special to me. Uh, I love she's that. Not much, she's not much of a gamer. So the fact that we were able to find a game that we could connect with and uh, really enjoy together uh, has been a lot of fun. Uh, we spent a few hours uh, the last couple of nights uh, trying to do this after our little one has gone to bed. Um, which is great. Uh, like I said, this is just a, a fun co-op game. Uh, really got to preface it that like this is meant for... <laughs> Thanks, babe. Uh, got to really preface it that this game uh, really shines because it, you need two people to play. Like This is a game that you can't play solo It's at designed all. to be played by two people at the same time. Exactly. And so the, they've introduced a friend pass, too. So friend the friend pass... pass Yes, sign me up. I know it's so good. (laughs) Um, So this allows someone who let's say they wanted to buy this game and they didn't have someone to play with. So instead of the other person having to also spend 40 bucks on the game, they introduce a friend pass. So if one of your friends owns the full game, you can download the friend pass and just play along with them. Now, yeah. uh, now you will uh, be able to play with them for the full game, which is great. It's not like a little demo or a section, or it doesn't force you to buy the full game. It allows Amazing. you to play. Yeah, it plays you. Uh, allows you to play the entire thing. Now, if let's say your friend is not online and they're not playing that game, you'll only be able to play the first chapter of the game, and you'll also need another person to play with you. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, it allows you to demo the game. It allows you to. Again, if you've got someone that has it, you can play with them. So anyone that's one of my friends, add me, and I'd be happy to play with you. Um, or if you're not wife. friends with Justin, make friends yes. with him just so you can play this game for free. And then leave me. Pass the first chapter anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so you're, just to clarify, only one ver- only one uh, of copies of this game needs to be purchased. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. So only so like if I wanted to play with you, all you would do is just you'd pick up the friend pass, which you can download That's huge. on. Yeah, and then we can easily play it together. So this is a really cool way to introduce a multiplayer game. Um, and there's and again, you're not spending a full sixty dollars like a triple A AAA game would be. And on top of that, another person's getting to play and experience this game um, in a very unique way because uh, unless you play through this game twice, or unless you're changing, you know who plays what character at the beginning you know me and my wife have locked in she's playing the female character i'm playing the male character but you know again if you wanted to try out the different mechanics you'd have to you know either play it again or you know close it out and then come back in but that's cool so yeah replay value there there's reasons there's compelling reasons to try the other characters you're saying oh other character there's only two right all right there are only two yeah okay Um, well tell me about the gameplay because we got some video footage here for sure. So this is a puzzle and platforming like on steroids. Like so here is just an example of, you know, where you're using abilities and items like in tandem and if you're not good about it, you kill your partner. Yes. Um yeah, which is which is funny because it it creates a lot of hilarity. Uh but you have to be very precise at times. Like when she you're having to, you know, set up the jump and then I like for me, my character was using these like sort of magical nails that I could throw uh, and like, st- oh. like make platforms stick. We just yeah, saw like, a, de- a death yeah, here. <laughs> yep, yep, several deaths. Yeah, this was a challenging and tricky spot because um, the controllers are 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 very reactive to like what you're doing. So like if I just hit triangle right now, that platform would drop out from underneath her, uh, and I'm sure that corresponding with the the Xbox. But yeah, to just make sure that you're lining up these shots here properly. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> I killed her so many times. I felt so bad. Oops. I was just, like really bad at this part. So, uh, but again, nothing feels recycled. Um, like the first chapter here, 
I got the nails and she got the hammer. And so she can use that to smash through things and also like hit buttons and stuff like that. Uh, and there are also a few other, like she can use the, the actual back side of the hammer as like a seesaw. So she can actually like move around the, the environment where otherwise I, uh, uh, yeah. So, Oh, weird. Yeah. I just saw that too. Um, what are you talking about? Oh, sorry. Oh, there was a an ad, comment. There's, there's a spammer uh, ad, putting ads in our Twitch stream right now. So I banned that, him. That bastard. Ban hammer. <laughs> so, uh, but anyways, yeah, no, uh, really love that. It just, again, it's really inventive. And I, I don't want to go into too much of the gameplay itself because I don't want to give away like all the, the chapters of the mechanics. Um, but again, it's it's so much fun. Uh, plenty of challenges, but it's a super forgiving system, as you saw right there, where I was, you know, unfortunately letting my wife die several, several times. Oh. The respawn on it is just very quick. Like, so like when you do die, uh, you can come back pretty much almost instantaneously. It's there's very little like wait or load time. Like here, I just went in a tube and just, you know, ended up in the muck and died. Um, so again, there's tons of forgiveness with uh, the respawn and very again low time between deaths is very you know very little i would say that a lot of times my deaths were from the camera angle the that could probably be the the worst uh, at yeah. worst of the times but uh that's that's yeah honestly that's uh, that's all i really have to say about that it's it's a huge plus that you can easily just pop in and out like you've si seen me in just this one clip yeah. in 30 seconds die like eight times and it's just really fast i love that uh, so, it just yeah it yep. just resets you from where you died basically and you get to try again and it doesn't affect your partner so it doesn't have to like reload the game or anything right yep. which is nope. really nice keeps you super engaged and so then it allows you to like create uh you know do what you have to uh do to get through the level and now boss fights super engaging tons of area of effect uh things that we've seen so far uh in our uh, first foray, there was a, a vacuum cleaner boss uh, that's coming up here pretty quick in the in the clip, and um, that one was quite challenging because yeah, it's it's coming up right here. So it, what he does is he throws these bombs out, and you have to suck up the bombs, and then the other person has to direct them. So um, yeah, it's uh, tons of fun. So I, I I can only say that you know with all the mechanics, we're walking away with sweaty palms. So this is not one that you know is for the you know for it's pretty twitchy at times so you've got to just be on your toes uh but again whenever you die during a boss fight you get it's a quick reload there are checkpoints in the boss fight so it will like we you know we'll get to a certain spot and maybe both of us will die and then we'll have to reload but oftentimes like if you've gotten to a certain spot in the boss fight you'll just load to that one spot versus having to do the entire thing all over again um and then, you know, it was really comical because at one point we were like both chanting like mantras to like keep ourselves alive or like mantras. <laughs> uh, we were like, stay alive, stay alive, babe, stay alive, babe. And like we were, like shouting at one another while we're like mashing the shit out of Love triangle, it. which is how you revive yourself. So uh, we played a, a little bit last night. And um, I would say without giving too much away, there's a spot where like it's literally uh, uh, a scene where it's Street Fighter on top of a makeshift airplane of underpants <laughs> yeah what? it's it's crazy yeah it's so uh, i don't know if i want to okay it's not really crazy spoilers but you work for squirrels and what? this one squirrel is like like nom like if you think of someone from like vietnam he's like i've seen some shit yeah. like that's the kind of squirrel that you're working for and you you steal his pilot you like you steal his ship and or his uh you know his airplane and you're like my wife was fighting him like street fighter style on top of the airplane <laughs> on the wings of the airplane. And the, the top wing is like my underwear that they stole. It's nice. It's yeah. It's so comical. It like, we were cracking up laughing until like, you know, midnight one in the morning. It's just a, a whole lot of fun. So yeah, she crushed it. There was like plenty of times where, you know, I like got just completely owned and she would be standing. I'd be like, Oh my God, she's so impressive. Uh, especially cause like I said, she's not much of a gamer and it, it just, yeah, you know, again, she's really killing it. And like I said, we've tried several co-ops games in the past. We've tried overcooked and a few other games, maybe with like, a female part yeah. And we've, and we've uh, played like, uh, some games that have like lead female protagonist and, uh, you know, they didn't, they didn't stick. And so with this game, we've been able to, 
really uh enjoy ourselves and and that's something that you know again is really special to me uh also got to mention too as you're seeing here in the stream uh these mini games so there yeah, are several... i was just gonna ask about this this is awesome yeah so there are t tons and tons of mini games nice. throughout the game that are separate completely from the actual mission um and you just are competing with one another and it's it's a lot of fun because it like breaks up the the story but it also kind of is is, is kind of bragging rights so yeah it's been a great game i can't wait to uh, play with other people so feel free and uh you know get that uh, friend and we can set up a time and date to, to to get together for that for sure that's awesome well i'm gonna set up a date with you because i want to play that for sure did we mention about uh anything about how good the graphics look uh yeah they look great on a four honestly i uh i can't complain there i'm sure they put look even better on a five or on the yeah. new series yeah so but it's got one of those things this i don't know if this is just an optics thing but like whenever there's a game that has tiny characters and so you see like all these cool textures on like all these things like nails and stuff that you wouldn't normally look at that closely right that's just super impressive to me like it just makes the game look way cooler <laughs> oh yeah it's great, and all the the videos where where me and her are streaming them uh, to Twitch every time we play. So you know, check out the uh, the Twitch for this. Uh, there's a lot of a lot more uh, a lot more footage there, <laughs> a lot more deaths. Uh, but yeah. yeah, if you if you're interested in checking it out again, it's all on my Twitch. Yeah, feel free and uh, you know tune in. Nice. Check yes. It but out. What are you been playing? Uh, okay, so well, I've been playing a couple of things actually, but I'm only going to talk about one of them today, uh, and that is Command and Conquer Remastered Collection. Nice. So yeah, so I I, I got uh, I have Game Pass. I've talked about okay. that before, and I haven't. I don't really play PC games anymore. I'm mostly just a console gamer uh, for many reasons. Uh, one of the reasons is is because I don't currently have a graphics card. This new PC that I bought, I'm just using like the onboard graphics. Which before you jump down my throat, anyone in the chat or anything, <laughs> let me explain. I wanted to build the most efficient uh, uh, streaming PC. Uh, and uh, apparently I found out that streaming video doesn't actually use the video card. I might be wrong about that, but that's what I found in my research. So I put all the, uh, all the money into like Ram and stuff like that. So without getting too nerdy, I don't have a good video card right now. So that's, you know, why I'm not playing it. Now, that being said, you don't need that for command and conquer, even the remastered collection, uh, cause it's so old. <laughs> so the integrated graphics are fine. And uh, this was a 95 game, wasn't it? That sounds about right. It's, it was definitely early to mid nineties, but okay. uh, yeah, it's been a long time. Uh, and I used to play it on my home PC a long, long time ago. And I loved it. It was one of my, uh, intros into, um, you know, this kind of game, like a tactical, uh, point and click, well, not point and click. Why can't I think of what that's called now? <laughs> what is it called? That kind of game? Uh an RTS, a real-time yeah, yeah, strategy? Yeah, real-time strategy. Sorry, it's eluding me for some reason. And we just <laughs> lost like 10 viewers. Uh, but <laughs> no, it's, it's been a long time. So I'm just saying like it was one of one of the few like first games that like RTS games that I played. Uh, so it really got me into the genre. But so anyways, uh, the graphics today, uh, if you were to go back, do not look so good. So this is really cool because they remastered. Um, the graphics and the UI and all that kind of stuff. So it does this really cool thing on uh, first boot of the game uh, where it, it, lo it shows like these UI loading graphics. Like it's like checking your system and, but it's not really, you know, it's just like, you know, a fun little thing it's doing. Uh, it's like optimizing the images and stuff like that. And it shows like this like old 3d logo that's spinning around and it, the resolution on it keeps going up and okay. stuff like that. And then finally it gets, uh, you know, all the way to like four four K, not four nice. K because I don't have four K, um, on my computer right now. But uh, it looks super good. And then it's and then it opens up with the uh, Westwood screen, but it's the modern version, so it looks like super clean and it just looks awesome. And then you get into the regular UI of the game, and you're just, and everything is crystal clear, and it's just great. So. Uh, I will say, because this game has a lot of uh, full motion video in, uh, in in between missions and things like that to set up okay. missions and, you know, to set the story and stuff, which was really kind of groundbreaking at the time. Like it was really, you know, cutting edge. They have real actors with green screens and really horrible CG uh, <laughs> uh, of like, you know, units from the game, like tanks and APCs and stuff like that. Uh, and like it just it does not look good. <laughs> and uh, they did not remaster those. So I'm a little disappointed about that. I thought it would be cool if they like went back and redid all the CG, but 
they didn't do that. And actually, I do have some gameplay. Uh, I'll put it up here too. And one of them, uh, you might see towards the beginning or the end when this loops, you might see the uh, one of the full motion videos. But yeah, does not that does not look good. Um, I do. I just have to say, you know, I got to do this one real quick here. Nostalgia bomb. <laughs> Absolutely. So from right right from the first mission, it just took me back to you know playing the original when I was a kid. Uh, it's really cool because it's just these little subtle things, but it's it boots up uh, when you start the first mission in the original graphics. Okay. And then it's like press the space bar to cycle to the new graphics or like you know the remaster graphics. So at right. any time you can just hit the space bar and it flips in between. And I love when games do that because I just I love to just occasionally, especially when like a new unit comes on the screen or something like that. Yeah. I love to just hit it and be like, wow, that that's what it looked like back then. You know, now it's so much better. <laughs> it's just fun. So uh, so that's a really cool thing you can do. Uh, it's just what a classic game. I mean, I love the simplicity of the systems in the game. Like like I said, it was one of the earlier RTSs. So nothing is like crazy complicated, but at the same time, everything's just really well balanced, and each unit has strengths and weaknesses, and you got to use these guys against these units, and you know this unit against the others, and things like that. But it's still something you can grasp. Like I feel like a lot of times, especially nowadays, if you were to get a new RTS, I I feel like a lot of times there's just so many systems and subsystems, and you know checks and balances. It's just so in depth. This is very yep. simple, so it's it's really easy to grasp and. And just straight fun, you know. Nice, nice. Now, uh, Son, I'm not used to this game. Like, I don't know this game, but it obviously reminds me of you're too uh, young, Warcraft. Justin. You're too young. No, I was gonna say it reminds me of Warcraft Three, uh, which was a game that I played very fondly. Um, and you know, just replace your tanks with horsemen, and then replace your infantry guys with soldiers or uh, or grunts or whatever like that. Yeah. And, you know. Mm -hmm. So, do you collect like like resources like wood and like iron yeah. to like so I was playing this last night uh, to capture with the intent to capture video. Mm -hmm. And of course, the, the three missions that were next available to me, I uh, they were all this type of thing that you're seeing here, where it was basically you just get units and you have to go around and kill all the you know bad guys. So I was the a little Nazis. disappointed. Yeah, I was a little disappointed because I did want to show video of the base stuff, too, especially for anyone who hasn't seen it, because that's really what the game is about. Nice. Um, but the the resource that you collect, there's only one, and it's okay. called Tiberium, and it's basically like green crystals that grow from the ground. Nice. And uh, one of the buildings you get is a harvester, uh, or sorry, it's a refinery, and it comes mm. with a harvester unit that goes out. It's like a really slow giant tank thing that okay. goes and like eats all the Tiberium, uh, <laughs> and then it brings it back to the refinery to refine. So it's there's a lot of really cool mechanics with that, like. In the game, there's a unit called an engineer where you can use them to steal buildings, and uh, and then once you steal the building, you can either, you know, build like if it's a barracks, you could build units and then have them uh, deploy right there, like inside okay. the person's base. So that's a cool like strategy. Nice. Um, but if you steal a refinery, when the harvester is docked in it and unloading the Tiberium, then you also steal the harvester. Oh, nice. So it's cool, and then you can yeah, and then it'll just automatically go out and you know, harvest Tiberium for you. Uh, it's automatic. And then, or you can sell the building, you know, so nice. you just steal it, sell it and, and be on your merry way. But, uh, yeah, so it's just, it's just a lot of fun. And, uh, the, I just, there's also one thing too, that they added here, which is zoom levels. Uh, because in the, uh, you know, in the past it was like very zoomed in and that was, you know, always one of the things cause the resolution was low. Right. So right. it was very like zoomed in everything so you could, you know, click on things easier and stuff. But uh, so they've added zoom level. So with the mouse wheel at any time, you can just and you'll see it in my video. You can scroll in for more detail or you can scroll out to get more, you know, uh, visualization on the map. Nice. Uh, or of the map rather. So, yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, sometimes I like to zoom in just to see. You know the the new detail of like the remastered characters and things like that, but for the most part, when I'm being strategic, I want to be like mostly all the way zoomed out, just so I can see right. as, as much as I possibly can. Dude, you're uh, you're making me want to play uh, Warcraft. I'm not even lying. Like, 
I'm supposed this to be is... making you want to play Command and Conquer Remastered. I'm, I, no. <laughs> I guess it's just the nostalgia aspect of it. Mm-hmm. For sure. But yeah. no, this looks great. Uh, now, one of the obviously the biggest thing in, in Warcraft was like being able to make your own map and everything else. Are you able to do that same kind of concept here? I'm fairly certain that you can. And there's also mods. Like there's a menu where you can go into and do mods and stuff. But I haven't... Uh, really messed around with that but i do believe that it that this comes with a map editor nice yeah and multiplayer i remember being really cool i think that was back in the day when we had like you know 288 modems and you had to you <laughs> dial, know, dial in AOL. directly or do, no <laughs> i think you had to like dial in directly to each other or something like that so you'd get connected you know through the game or something if i remember correctly but Crazy. Uh, but it was so fun because you know you both would basically just build bases up until you know, each player had like a gigantic army and then you'd either one person would invade the other and just totally decimate them or they'd kind of like meet in the middle and just have this like crazy battle. Nice. You know, it's always fun. And I think you could even do like up to four, maybe more uh, wow. players at a time. Yeah, which is crazy for an RTS, at least back then. So, but now was yeah. it, did it offer it only, was it only online or what, could you like locally co-op? Like if you oh, were no, like, no, it was a, it was the straight up land party thing too. I mean, okay. gotcha. that you could definitely do that. Uh, nice. If I, if I remember correctly, I might be wrong. Like I said, it's been like what, 30 years or something like that. Yeah. 25. Yeah. 25. Uh, I think this can't, cause this was uh, the 25th edition, right? That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah. No, now, that's you were crazy just, old. Nice. Now I was going to ask this. Uh, I thought I saw this on steam going for 20 bucks. Is that right? I don't pay attention to that anymore, Justin, because oh. I get games for free on Game Pass. <laughs> nice. So this is on Game Pass, and uh, yeah, it's because it, EA Play comes with Game Pass now. It's included. Nice. So I did have to jump through some hoops uh, to get um, EA Play because you have to download their software. Okay. So And then you have to link your Xbox account to that, but then once you do that, you can just go right into the EA Play app and you can install stuff right from there so nice uh, it was yeah it was easy and fun i do want to just do a quick shout out to the music in this game because a it's always been amazing but uh it now is even like way better i swear i tried to do some research on this but i swear they uh in the remaster of the music they added some real instruments but it's basically like heavy metal like uh and then they have voices in there too so they're like I'm trying to think of an example. There's like, I don't know, just random like shit, like people announcing stuff like there's, there's a ghost in the alley or, you know, something like that. <laughs> like while you're, <laughs> while this like heavy metal music is playing. So it's just super like energizing. It's really fun. Nice. Now, would you say that this is on par with like uh old school doom kind of music? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah? Would, yeah. Nice. You can go nice. check it out. I mean, if you, if you Google uh command and conquer one, or just Command and Conquer soundtrack. Yeah, uh, you can listen to the original, and it's like, you know, it's highly regarded as some nice. of the some of the best video game music. So that's awesome. Yeah, check that out. But anyways, the remaster is even better. It sounds awesome, and I love it. Uh, one last thing, um, I'm only about five missions in on the GDI side. That's the good guys. Okay. Um, and I'm really, I really can't wait to try. It. This because this is a collection, so it comes with Command and Conquer and then Command and Conquer Two, which is Red Alert. Okay. Uh, and those are both remastered, so I, I can't wait to check out Red Alert remastered because that, if I recall, had even, you know, it had it added a bunch of new units, and I think they even upgraded the graphics a little bit on that, so it probably is going to look a little bit even better. Do you, Do you get to uh, be the bad guys? Oh yeah, you can. Yeah, and you can do that at any time, so you don't oh, have nice. to play one campaign or the other in its entirety. You can actually just flip between like missions if you want. So if you want to play one mission as GDI and Nod is the terrorist uh, organization, the global terrorist organization in the game, uh, and you can be them too. So okay, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, and interesting. They, they have a lot of really neat. There's a unit that they have. It's a, or a building rather called the Obelisk of or no, maybe it's the Hand of Nod. I don't remember. I think it's like the Obelisk or something. But anyways, it's like this Obelisk. Uh, it's like a turret. That you yeah. put outside your base that shoots a laser at units and they just blow up. That's so awesome. like especially infantry, like the infantry units will just be running in. It's like, <laughs> and then you just see them like blow up. It's it's awesome. <laughs> that's that's pretty cool. Yeah, I think you'd like it. You know, it's not uh, Warcraft, but uh, you know, it's like it, it is. It, it is like the same thing. So just yeah. futuristic. 
Right on. All right. Anyways, let's keep things moving with News Bites. Oh, yeah. Yum. Put them in my mouth. Tasty. <laughs> nom, 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 nom. All right. We got yeah, some news here. It's been a couple weeks. Uh, so we've, I think we've compiled some stuff from not just this week, but maybe a few things that have happened yep. recently also. So what do we got first here, Justin? So we got a really awesome uh, sort of gift from Sony. So they uh, actually just re- released a new batch of free PlayStation 4 and 5 games uh, yeah! that are now available. Yeah. So from now through April 22nd, uh, these titles are going to be free to claim. You don't need to have uh, PlayStation Plus. So Crazy. Uh, yeah. So like unlike a PlayStation Plus, like if you, let's say last month's games or this month's games technically uh, is is Final Fantasy VII Remake. But if you, let's say, next month canceled your your PS Plus, you don't have access to that game anymore. Right. With these games, completely free. You'll keep them forever and ever. Uh, so make sure you grab these. But it's going to start off with uh, Abzu, which is, um, uh, I believe it was an it says, underwater yeah, like diving kind of game. Mm-hmm. And this was yeah. given away. Some of these have been given away on uh, PS Plus before. Now, yeah. And that actually makes me wonder, because I know Abzu specifically was... I, yeah and uh because i have that but so i wonder how that works then does that mean that they do you think we have to do anything to make that license you know ours like forever instead yeah, of, yeah I instead of doing the playstation plus thing i wonder if they even have a path for that i don't know people. maybe maybe we just delete it from our library right now and then go get it again through this thing maybe but i don't know it doesn't really matter because i'm always gonna have ps plus because it kicks ass it does kick ass, especially this <laughs> last month. This last month has been solid primo game. Yeah. Uh, Enter the Gungeon is also uh, part of this. Nice. Uh, Res Infinite and Subnautica, and then the next four games are all VR games. So awesome. if you're, yeah, so if you're, uh, you have a, the PSVR when it initially came out, and you're using it for your five, you're still going to need the camera, but you get uh, Astrobot Rescue Mission. Oh, Moss. Yes. You'll get uh, Moss, which is the 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 rodent the mouse yes uh, you i know, always knight. wanted that game i'm excited yes, exactly and now you also get thumper which is uh Great. like a music game mm-hmm. uh and then you'll also get uh paper beast which i'm not sure what that one is i'm not either but i also really wanted to try astrobot rescue mission because the 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 astrobot like franchise is uh sony exclusive but it's basically been for demo like demos and you know, uh, things like that. When new hardware comes out, they'll have like tech demos and stuff that have the AstroBots in it. And then yeah. more recently with PS5, well, they did come out with the AstroBot Rescue Mission for VR, which was a full game. But yeah. this this, for, this IP is quickly becoming like a PlayStation, you know, icon. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, AstroBot Playroom uh is awesome too. But just good stuff. I love them. AstroBot so hot right now. It's like mm-hmm. Hansel. <laughs> yeah, bye, bye, bye. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you also can pick up uh, Ratchet and Clank still, so they still have that one going through the 31st, so you've got a couple days left for that. Again, that's also completely free, uh, so yeah, definitely make sure you pick that up because it's a great game. Um, and then there, uh, Sony, I guess, is also supposedly uh, in the works of giving away Horizon Zero Dawn. Yes! Uh, starting starting mid-April. Now, this game has been you know discounted and showed up, you know, like heavily discounted, you know, during sales and whatnot like that. But again, if you've missed out on it, or let's say if you don't have a five yet, because I know with five you get you know ten or so games. Oh, that's from the included too, gen. right? Right. So this one is going to be completely you know free as well too. Uh, supposedly again coming mid April. So we should have some more details about that here in the next coming weeks. But that's again that's the rumor. But it's a it's a solid game. It really never got its its dues because it came out literally like the same month that breath of the wild came out and so this is just a great way to to pick that up if you you know missed out on it or hadn't heard about it and want to play it before the sequel comes out nice yes yes all right uh uh so this one's really exciting and uh shmed couldn't be with us today if you were wondering that's why we only have two frames instead of three uh and he was going to talk about ghost of tsushima so this was kind of a cool news bite that we have in here too but still very exciting nonetheless ghost yeah. of tsushima is getting a movie adaptation from the director of drum roll john wick oh yeah oh man this is gonna be amazing oh yeah it's 
it's going to be so good. And it really makes sense. Um, you know, this is actually PlayStation's fastest selling original first party IP debut. Mm-hmm. Like this game sold 2.4 million copies in the first three days. So that's almost 1 million per day. Yeah, it was, it was wild. <laughs> so I, uh, really, really stoked that this is being turned into a movie. And again, Chad, uh, Stoleski is just a master of action. He, you know, when I, you go through his Wikipedia and like all the things that he's attributed with, like in movies and films and and everything else, like he's not only been a, like a, a huge influencer in like stunt uh, coordinating, but also like a master of martial arts. Um, so this is this is what this movie really needed was someone that can appreciate and respect, you know, sort of that culture um, with samurais and be able to, you know properly articulate that kind of movie uh and give it the right feels and treatment that it needs instead of being like a cliche or mockery Mm -hmm. uh because like i feel like sometimes like these movies can be kind of hammed up uh and i feel like if you know if sony and sucker punch uh you know can all sit down together and really produce the hell out of this movie i think it's going to be gangbusters bro hell yeah dude i'm excited about it yeah. Uh, we'll see what happens. Would, do, yeah, did they say anything about an estimated uh, release date? Uh, they didn't. I think they're just in the works of it. So, um, you know, they, they're probably We're still talking working on 20, script. 23 or 2024 probably. or something. Definitely. Because I, I think even like when you, you're you looking at like the movies that are coming out here for Uncharted with, you know, Nathan Drake being Tom Holland. I think mm-hmm. that's slotted for 2022. Uh, you also have uh, Metal Gear Solid getting a treatment like this with, with uh, Solid Snake being played by uh, Oscar Isaac. I didn't think so. I, I don't I'm not sure I knew that. That's pretty rare. Yeah, I know. Mm-hmm. And then uh, there's an HBO uh, series that's being based off The Last of Us starring uh, everyone's favorite Mando. Uh, he's going to be the, uh, he's going to be, uh, Joel. Nice. Yeah. Really? Pedro. Yep. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. So very cool. We should start I, I a, mean, we should start a sister podcast where we just talk about movies and things. Yeah, we should totally do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm excited for Mortal Kombat next month. I mean, fuck yeah. Hell yeah. That's awesome. That's gonna be so good. Oh, very exciting. <laughs> yes. All right. This one is insane. Yeah. Uh, so reportedly Microsoft is in talks to purchase discord over uh for over 10 billion b- billion dollars billion billion uh to, to put that in kind of a, a context microsoft just bought bethesda for 7.5 billion and you have like epic games like fallout mm. and uh elder scrolls elder and like scrolls. and and dishonors and you know and doom and yeah. wolfenstein like all those games huge ips Huge IPs, and that was seven point five billion, and they're talking over ten billion uh, for for Discord. I mean, that's just wild. Yeah. So, what are they? What would they do with this? I mean, they've already got chat, you know, chat stuff. Is it just like the chat server, you know, with the integrated? Like, is it because it's more game focused? That and like, I guess it's like to connect like PC with console with mobile. So like, it's wanting to kind of tie all that together. So mm-hmm. if you've got one platform that can you know seamlessly be integrated between all three, that's what they're trying to look for. I don't believe that they have you know that set up right now because, um, you know if you're if you're on PC, you may not see the people that are playing mobile. Right. And so that's that's the idea is what they're wanting to do is make it so that it's a better communication platform for their entire system hmm. um, and just giving it a, you know, a, a better feel, you know, better experience for the players. And I feel like, you know, Microsoft, uh, you know, takes takes a few steps forward and a few steps backward. But, uh, you know, ultimately, at the end of the day, I think that they're trying to do their best. And, uh, you know, Discord may just still walk away. They actually approached Microsoft to see if they were even interested. So it wasn't Microsoft came you know around oh, to them okay they came to they came to microsoft and they said hey are you interested in buying uh us um and so i guess you know phil spencer's been in big talks with this um they've you know that's been a pretty big thing um but they may still decide to go public i mean you know they i think they got an evaluation on their company of like seven billion Jeez. so yeah they just recently did a, a thing so they may go public and you know watch it Make blow their own even money more exactly uh I'd so, take the ten knows? billion cash out. I'm I'm just saying, right? You know, it's like playing the lottery. You know, you never know what could happen. That's exciting, though. I mean, if that did happen, then it you know we could see a unified platform connect you know the Xbox consoles with you know PC like you talked about and mobile and uh, especially with like X Cloud and all that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, 
That seems like it could be really cool. Yeah. I think that'd be great integration there just to bring it all together and, and create an accessibility for a lot of people. You know, there's, I mean, Discord's already being used by so many different people and mm-hmm. kind of just, you know, we're going to mention here and again, just a moment is that there are some games out there that people prefer just to use Discord for. Like when I would play Final Fantasy with my friends, uh, they would play, you know, some of them be on PC and some would be on PlayStation. But if you wanted to talk with one another, yep. you would use Discord. So or, this is just or Nintendo Switch. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That is a hot mess. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, no, and it's awesome because you can just uh, pop on Discord on your phone and yep. you can just join voice chats like it's super easy. Uh, you know, it's just like you're, ta- you're on speakerphone basically. And then with the addition of video and stuff, we started using that for the show early on. Uh, now we're using Skype, but, uh, you know, we use Discord video for a really long time. So, yeah, it could definitely have some interesting implications. Yeah, I we got a uh, uh, one of my good friends here, uh, Jake. He's as uh, you know here off in the chat. He's talking about you know if Discord goes public, um, you know they're gonna you know be forced to sell ads, and it could end up like Facebook. So I don't know. I mean that could be troubling too. I don't I don't want to see it get no. You know want that. muddied up. No yeah, more no. private servers. Do you think you'll still be they'll be able to like? Could we still have the SJR server? Or will we all get lumped into like I don't you know. know giant corporate servers or something like that? The future freaks me out, man. We don't, I don't know. know. I know. We should just we should just give up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like I said, with uh, with one step forward, there's a there's a couple steps back. So Xbox Live is now being called Xbox Network. Mm, okay. Yeah. So not exactly. So this is what I gathered from it. And correct me if I'm wrong here. It sounds like what they want to do is, uh, and this kind of ties in with the neck with the next news bite also. But basically, uh, Microsoft is not going to paywall certain services that were uh, only exclusive on Xbox Live. For example, party chat. So like PlayStation, you don't have to have PlayStation Plus to be able to party chat, right? I'm pretty sure you don't. At least you didn't used to. Right. But uh, uh, And then, again, we talked about this before, but like Microsoft used to require uh, Xbox Live just to watch Netflix that you already have a subscription for and any other subscription services. Now, obviously that didn't fly because people were like, what the hell? And I don't want to have to pay $50 a year or $60 a year to be able to watch Netflix on your box when I can watch on anything else. So they got rid of that right away. Yep. Uh, but uh, party chat and free to play games, you like up until very recently to play Fortnite on Xbox, you also had to have Xbox live. Yep. Uh, so yeah, annoying stuff. So anyways, they're getting rid of all that. So basically all you're going to have to pay for 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 Xbox Live is uh, the ability to play with other people, you know, to actually play the games. So the Xbox Network name is actually for the free, you know, available to everyone who has an Xbox network. Okay. Xbox Live, from what I'm understanding here, is going to remain. It's still going to be called Xbox Live Gold. Yep. Because remember, they were trying to get rid of that, too. They were trying to wipe out Xbox Live Gold and push everyone into Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Right. Lots of words here. Right. <laughs> Lots of arbitrary, exciting <laughs> words like Ultimate. Yeah. And Live Gold. Uh, but anyway, so it's people push back on that, too. And uh, so it sounds like Xbox Live Gold is still going to stay around for a while. Yeah. But, but now there will be Xbox Network which yep. is the base free thing on every Xbox. Xbox right. Live Gold, if you just want to play with other people and then get the couple of free games every month, yep. or Game Pass Ultimate, which really is the no-brainer option because it's $5 more than Xbox Live Gold, plus you get gold, plus you get uh, you know the Game Pass library. Right. So I think they should just call it Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, uh, bring it down a couple of bucks a month and get rid of everything else, and that's it. Yeah, I mean, it would be smart to, to just kind of couple that all together and, and make it, you know, where maybe just a little bit more affordable. Um, you know, I mean, but... fifteen bucks a month is still awesome for all of that because you get you basically can do all of it for fifteen bucks a month. So right, I mean, you pay fifteen dollars for for WoW, you pay fifteen dollars for Final Fantasy, you pay you know seven bucks for for Disney, you know. 10 bucks for Hulu. Could you imagine if they charge I mean, for these individual, like if you had to pay for Xbox Live Gold and then you also had to pay for Game Pass? Yeah. Like that would just get so complicated. So it is nice well, that they have the Game Pass Ultimate as a right, bundle. Right, which, 
and I think that's what Sony should really do with their Xbox, you know, you know, with their, yes, now. their kind of, yeah, with that. For sure. They need to, because I feel like that falls behind dramatically. Like, I don't feel like it's as as inventive or innovative as, you know, the Xbox Game Pass. I mean, it's not at all. Just, but no. uh, I've been I've been calling for that for years, Justin. Like, yeah, bring in P- a PS Now into the PlayStation Plus subscription. Do it for free. You really should. But if you're gonna charge a little bit more, charge a little bit more. But it's having it as a completely separate service is stupid. But anyways, that's not yeah. what we're talking about today. No, no. <laughs> All right, uh, so, but yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no. I was gonna say uh, just kind of like couple on here with the, the Xbox again with the party chat. It's no longer to be required for Xbox Live Gold right. uh, for those free to play games like we talked about. So, like for Rocket League, Fortnite. Uh, now, this is still in beta test, so this isn't actually open yet, um, but it really should be because there should be no reason why there should be a paywall for a free to play game to be able to chat with people, uh, especially when there are other things out there for those people like Discord. Discord yeah. yeah, to Which use. Which they'll soon own anyway. So, right, exactly. <laughs> Unless Amazon swoops in and buys it because, you know, Amazon owns everything. Bidding war. Yeah, right. Ooh, that'd be intimidating. <laughs> All right. I, I was perusing my news feed and I, I ran across this and I just, it caught my eye. Lawn mowing simulator announced for Xbox and PC. Beta test begins very soon. So this is an article on GameSpot.com. You can check it out there. Uh, so is, is this where we're at now with Sims? Where yeah. <laughs> people want to mow the lawn? Like, yeah, I don't I even want to so. go out and mow the lawn like for real. Why the hell would I want to do that in a simulator? So I guess I mean this is going to be this is from the same creators of uh, Train Simulator. Of so course this is it from is. Skyhook Games, <laughs> and uh, this is essentially it's not just mowing lawns. It's going to be about building like a lawn mowing empire. I mean, it sounds really silly, but you're going to be using like okay. state of art equipment. Uh, you know, super expensive lawn equipment that you'll have, you know probably never in your life want to own, right? Uh, or have any need for. Uh, but again, the idea is that you're going to be like acquiring a headquarters, you'll hire employees, uh, you'll buy advertisement slots, uh, and more. So there's a lot that goes along with this game. It's, so it's, it's a more business, than just a, more of like right. a business sim. Well, damn you, Justin. Now I want to play it. <laughs> right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to sell you on it, but also you'll tour the UK countryside. So if you've never okay. been to, if you've never been to Britain, you know, this is going to be pretty interesting. So you'll just take on jobs. Uh, that'll advance your like sort of abilities out in the field. Uh, this will include things like mulching and stripe rollers and grass collecting. Ah, I was going to ask. So it's not just cutting; it's also lawn uh, health care. Uh, yes, there's maintenance. Yes, yeah. lawn care. I guess they <laughs> would call that. Right. Yes. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's a it's a way to mow the lawn without any allergies. You mm. know. So yeah. All right. So those 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 uh. Those fortunate few that haven't had to go outside and cut their lawn in a long time because of allergies. Well, here you go. There you uh, go. And you can still you. drink beer while you're doing it. Exactly. You can. Well, you can get a coaster. Yeah, that's a, like a little <laughs> cup holder. Yeah, a like cup holder for that. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Um, now this is going to be uh, available to test through the Xbox Insider program from April second through the sixteenth. This was one of the games that they showed in their recent indie games. Uh, their nice. presentation that they did here on Friday. So this we'll is, get into that this too is, in a minute. Yeah, Absolutely. But yeah, this is one of the ones that was a little comical, like why? But, uh, you know, yeah, train people for to do real work. I, I, you know, they, they had the doc simulator. I don't, I don't know if anybody that played that was like, I could be a doctor. Yeah, no, that's true. And, uh, it's, but yeah, I mean that what, after you describe the business aspects of it, I mean, it makes a lot more sense because you're building an empire. It's a business simulator, but it's sur- the, you know, surrounding, lawn mowing <laughs> but it's, it's like, I, I mean it's like farm simulator you know or anything right. like that and you know to be fair it, all of them are probably more interesting than bus driver simulator which right i think you're yep. just driving on a long stretch of road across the country or something <laughs> that's awesome uh i was gonna say it'd be really it'd be awesome if like you could like have like turf wars <laughs> <laughs> is that a pun i kind of yeah if you could <laughs> <laughs> like if you could like like have like rival gang like lawn mowing like hey this is our side of the town this is our turf <laughs> yeah right you go cut the lawns over there <laughs> <laughs> oh that's that's funny <laughs> no, that'd be great so I don't know I mean I I I'm not I'm not gonna be rushing out to buy this game and any anytime soon but I think that uh, this is silly I mean it it probably fits the note like there's obviously the goat simulator. Where you play as a goat, mm-hmm. like yeah, that game is terrible. 
<laughs> right. But people loved it. I mean, there's like, it spawned sequels. And so like, they just, you know, with these Sim games, they're just, you know, what, what wacky thing will they think of next? I have no idea. I, I have no idea. All right. This one you put on here. Let's what's this one? Yeah. So kind of in theme uh, from last week and obviously with this month here, we're, you know, honoring women in, in gaming and obviously women of history here. That's what this month is all about. So uh, Saban uh, Reddy, she is actually the studio director of Media Molecule. She actually received a super prestigious award. Uh, it's called the BAFTA Fellowship. Uh, so this is like the highest award given for like a, for accomplishments that are made in sort of. So what that is, is it's British. um British Academy for Film Television Awards. And so they've they brought in video games here within the last, I want to say 10, 15 years or so at this point. Uh, but it previously just been, you know, film and television. Uh, but this is just really cool. So again, this is about the their contribution in uh in their in their division in their in the arts and so she's actually won this and so it's it's a huge honor she now joins you know greats like you know alfred hitchcock charlie chaplin spielberg uh miyamoto has won this uh helen murin uh kathleen yeah kathleen kennedy so uh this is actually really cool i didn't realize that she's the kathleen kennedy is the president of lucas films yeah so yeah so that's super cool i mean you know don't forget about kojima Oh, absolutely not. He was the last one I was going to mention, too. <laughs> I believe Kojima won last year. Um, so these are nice. just a few of the people. And so and she's actually the first female to win this award that's part of the gaming industry. So awesome. Yeah. You know, yeah. So there have been a few like Miyamoto and Kojima. And there are a few others like the the founder of Atari was on there and the creator of Valve was on there from a few years ago. So, again, there have been video game people, pioneers in, you know, that have won this award, but she is the first female to win this award, which is really cool. So awesome. Um, yeah, she received that award for her pioneering work on advocacy for diversity, inclusion, and also creative and collaborative working culture. Uh, Media Molecule is actually a really small studio. Uh, they, they got the concept because they didn't want like wasted energy, you know? Mm. So they have the same kind of grind that, you know, the gaming industry has, but it feels more like a family is what when I was looking into Media Molecule is they have about 50, uh, 50 employees. Actually, it was the huge inspiration to Kojima when Kojima started his uh, studio back in 2016. He visited Media Molecule and liked their model so much that because essentially it makes everyone a very valuable part of the team. Mm -hmm. You know, he he said, oh, I'm only going to have 100 people work for me. So like his his studio is very limited in that scope, so that way they can make quality games and make sure everyone you know is as included as, as they can. Like everyone is important. Uh, mm -hmm. There's no wasted space, and that's what Media Molecule did. And so she is now the uh, studio director. She was brought in as a as a creative director at one point. Her biggest um, her biggest games and contributions were for the Little Big Planet series. Uh, Excellent. And so, yes, very good games. And so. But again, over the years, she's she's turned into a studio director, and uh, and again, she just she was rewarded, you know, uh, just I think five days ago is when that when that uh, award ceremony took place. So that was really cool. Nice. Well, congratulations. That's exciting. Yes. 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 yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Amazon's at it again. Yep. Amazon is opening its first ever video game development studio that will focus on creating brand new AAA games. Yeah, that's they true. didn't do this yeah. before. No, they must have partnered I, with somebody. I thought they were working on. Didn't they have like an exclusive first party AAA game I, I, or something? I think they were just trying to come up with games because the, the the biggest thing with Amazon is they they didn't have any hit games. Like they were that was yeah. like their focus was they were trying to bring in third parties to make games exclusive for Amazon. Right, but you know it just was you know they're not like why would out. we do that when we could make them for PlayStation and Xbox? Right, exactly. And so, uh, so hey, if you're in Canada, uh, that's where they're building it. It's uh, it's gonna be in Montreal, and they are currently hiring. So if you love video games and love making them, and you know, if you listen to our show, yeah, think Men of us. Mention you, SJR, and we'll get a twenty yeah. percent kickback on your yeah monthly employment for sure. <laughs> that would be nice, right? Or just let us uh, come on, and uh, we don't know how to. Well, you know, you kind of know how to make video games. I, I only know how to do with like limited programs. I don't know how to code. Well, I feel like I have a lot of good ideas. So if you're listening, yeah. Amazon, hook it up. Yep, right on. <laughs> I, I am a I'm Prime member. Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Including my, my voice should membership. be heard. <laughs> yeah. All right. Here is the uh, the the big news here. Is, yeah, yeah. Uh, Xbox Indie Showcase, the ID at Xbox uh, Indie Showcase. 
that uh, it featured over 60 uh, indie games coming to Xbox with 22 of them coming yep. to Game Pass on day one. Yep. Which is awesome. So I do have it, this. I do have uh, some cool s- screens here of some of the games. So let's go through just a couple of the highlights. We don't need to go through the entire list because obviously 60 games is quite a lot. Yeah. Um, but the first one here, what did you think about this? Exo Mecha? Yeah, this is real slick looking. Like, uh, it's a free to play sci fi shooter. Uh, it's coming to Xbox and PC. Uh, and then it'll like uh, allow crossplay too. So you're going to be able to play, you know, with your, your pals on PC or on Xbox. Um, but it is like, it straight up looked like a mixture of like Terminator and Titanfall when I was watching the, uh, the trailer for this. I, it, yeah. I totally thought it, this was Halo for a second because he has the grappling hook. Yeah. Where, you know, where he can shoot, like, shoot a grappling hook and like, swing up to something and right. they're getting in and out of vehicles and stuff like that. And I'm like, it obviously doesn't look like Halo, but like mechanically it looks like a kind of like a dollar store Halo. No, I, and I don't mean that. And I, I guess it does sound bad. Let me rephrase that then. So it's, it doesn't look up to par with Halo standards, but right. it looks like they're using a lot of the same mechanics and, uh, and things that Halo uses. But that right. being said, I mean, it does look really, really, really good. I mean, there's and, literally a, a a mecha dragon breathing fire on yes. the battlefield. Like, like it's going to be crazy. Like, this is supposed to be, like, huge. Like, again, very Titanfall-esque. Uh, but you're going to be, like, like when I was watching the trailer, just was it was very smooth. And, like, graphics looked amazing on mm-hmm. it for for an indie game. I was like, holy shit. It doesn't look looks, like an indie game at all. Right. It looks like a AAA. Like, it looks yeah. real flashy. Uh, so, I don't know. Pretty stoked on that. That looks pretty good. I, I'll probably you know, hop in there if it, it doesn't... Uh, you know, require a sick, sick graphics card. Uh, well, I'll be on, on there on PC. Xbox through Game Pass because yeah, it's it looks awesome and uh, yeah. That what really sold me because at first I was thinking, okay, well this looks like Halo but not as good. But then they started showing the giant mechs. Yeah, and I'm like, whoa, okay, because you're just there's one point where you're just like an infantry soldier guy running around on the ground, and yeah. then like you see a giant mech like run by, and you're like, and I was just like, whoa, hold on a second. <laughs> this is just like Titanfall. It's crazy. Or like uh, those Japanese uh, old school movies with like oh, Ultraman Gundam. and stuff like that. Yeah, Gundam yeah. too. Yep. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Super cool. So super stoked on that one. Can't wait to see more. I don't know. It said coming soon, but it didn't say. I don't believe it had a, a specific date for that, unfortunately. We'll see. Uh, yep. Yep. But uh, Omno was another one that, that kind of stuck out to me. So this one. Uh, it's very cool looking. It's very minimalistic. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's you know it's an exploration game, uh, with puzzles and platforming. So I don't think it's gonna be you know challenging any of the you know the main platformers out there like a Mario by any means. But just the concept of it, you know, very minimalistic. You know, exploration game kind of gets me excited because it looks cool. It, yeah, very cool. Uh, you know, I was excited when I saw this the the trailer for this one. Um. Yeah, it's definitely something up my alley. I, I've been really into like the the ones that are open worldy, where you can explore mm-hmm. and there's a little puzzles. Um, so those are fun to just kind of just you know, it's not too complicated and it's it's an easy burn, you know. Yeah, I'm hoping that it's like an open kind of like exploration thing, and I'm not sure. Did they have you seen any details on it? Not yet. Again, it's another one that's kind of coming soon, but you know, there wasn't much more other than just the you know the little trailer that they, they had sure, going uh, there. Yeah, they sure alluded to it being like an exploration type game. Yeah. So I hope it's actually really open. But one of the things that concerns me is it looks like there's a lot of open, like open area that you have to fly from like I, like floating island to floating island kind of thing. So yeah. it looks like it might be big, but not actually big. You know what I mean? So you're just going right. to like a bunch of. Little, you know, like Wind Waker, basically, you're like going to a bunch of tiny islands, which I loved. So, I mean, right. you know, that's not bad. Um, but I don't know. We'll see. I, I like the character design and stuff like that. It's very mysterious and kind mm-hmm. of like ancient looking, but it's also magical. Like a, a, yeah, it's it's also kind of got like a gloomy kind of feel to it in a way. I know that sounds weird to like say, but like it has like kind of like this. Uh, I don't know. It, it kind of almost has like this underwater feel to it. Like I mean, you could see like floating jellyfish, mm-hmm. and I don't know. It just uh, to me, I'm I'm really looking forward to trying this game out, especially if it uh, it is as open as they say it is. Yeah. Well, I'm yeah. interested too. All right, next we yes, got Void Train. Yeah, this it's just kind of blew my mind. I'm like, what am I looking at here? Yeah. Yeah, it's a it's a wacky one. It's a first person shooter. Um, there there was a few other like uh, moments where in the trailer there was like a flying whale 
uh, yeah. coming at you. Yeah, it was wild. So I was like, okay, this is trippy. So what you're doing is essentially you're piloting this train, this train to like nowhere. That uh, has tracks that are like floating in the air, right? And it goes through yeah. like dimensional portals or something. It's wild, yeah. And so you're collecting resources to upgrade your train and upgrade your weapons. Um, and this is like a co-op with like four friends. So it like it kind of to me sounded like could it be like a sea of thieves, but with flying trains? <laughs> like Arr. it's yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> train uh, air, air train pilots. Right, exactly. I mean, like in the screenshot here, we've got like them like firing back and forth between like rival trains. Um you know, I, I hope they, they put a mod in there for, like, Thomas the Tank. Oh, they I want have that, to. Man. They have to. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Acquire <laughs> those rights. <You're> right. <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, I think it looks cool. Uh, I'm hoping that these that we've uh, selected to highlight here on the show are all going to be on Game Pass. But yeah. I, did, I did remove your list from the notes here, the full list. Oh, no worries. So we'll never I, I know. I want to say, I think the, the ones that, the, there are a few here that I listed there that will be... Uh, Day, day one game pass like if they have day one game pass in the little notes that we yeah. wrote down about these games it, it'll be it'll be day one so well i like uh, being surprised on there anyways like oh yeah, yeah void train that's that game that we talked about that one time yeah flying whales <laughs> yeah totally crazy all right next totally yeah song of iron man this is uh if you didn't get enough uh you know viking and you know love from uh from valhalla with assassin's creed this is uh gonna be you know, coming up here, no one is tired of Vikings. Like, let's just be real here. They're just badass. So this <laughs> is a side scrolling action game. So like, nice. as you, yeah, so this is gonna be super cool. Uh, so this is a warrior. Uh, he's the last of his tribe and his goal is super simple. He's seeking out the gods to regain their favor and he's going for revenge, motherfucker. Like he is, he is coming for it. Um, and there's a, a lot of uh, like cool cutscenes where like you know he's like sneaking in between like enemy enemy camps or whatever like that like he's in the shadows but you can still see him um, and it's all progressing as you're you're progressing uh, you know right uh, so this is uh, gonna be coming here mid 2021 to Xbox so this will be an Xbox exclusive and PC uh, so this one a really certainly uh, Game Pass day one then I believe so yeah well, if it's an exclusive I think they said all of them all yeah. their exclusives are. So hooray! This will be yeah hooray! This one will be cool. So uh, next did, one is actually the one. This this next one is actually the one that I'm most hyped about. Yeah, I was gonna say I, this wasn't even on my radar at all. Like even when I watched the well, until I mean, I guess when I watched the stream and I realized what I was looking at, I'm like, whoa, yeah. this is crazy. So what are you like a UFO in this game? Essentially, is you're playing like a, you're piloting an alien spaceship and you're just gliding around an alien world. Nice. Um, so I mean, it takes the concept of the the pilot sim or whatever, or the airplane sim that came out, like the flight simulator mm -hmm. from last year, but except you're on an alien planet and it's just it's trippy. So it's gonna it be looks super awesome too, like the I, the environmental effects and textures and like the yeah. water and yeah, there's fire sparks and all sorts of cool stuff. Uh, it's it's super cool. Like I was like really impressed with like this game and just kind of coming out of nowhere. So it's just a very chill. This this is what I would would coin as a smoky game if you get my feel. <laughs> the, uh, the jazz cabbage. Yeah, the jazz cabbage. This is a jazz cabbage, <laughs> a jazz cabbage and uh, X O one kind of day kind of thing. You know, nice. a lot yeah. of these games. I think you could say that about. <laughs> it's very true, but I love this exploration. Just like very, you know, and it's I don't know. It's just it's just trippy, you know, for for people to be like, you know going out there making these types of games very very cool yeah glad to see that it's not just a pilot sim you know this is something brand new like i don't sure. i don't i don't want to visit sydney in an airplane like that's cool but like that's not exciting to me not this for however me. right this however is very cool yeah very excited about it we'll, we'll see yeah. uh this game i'm really excited about too uh we've got nobody saves the world yep so the developers of guacamelee Yep. Uh, this is an action RPG that has you saving the world in various forms you unlock as you play through the game. Uh, and yeah, what do you think? The graphics look awesome, like hand-drawn yep. kind of art style. It, it reminds me so much of like a Cartoon Network kind of game. Like that, the mm -hmm. vibe in it is just like it. It's it's striking. It like it it, it resonates with me almost like childhood. Um, mm -hmm. And this it's it's going to be a day one Game Pass game, so that's really cool. Uh, but the, yeah, from what I saw here about that is there's like this 
uh, I can't remember what it was called. I think they called it the Calamity. It was coming, and the the main wizard that's like the defender of the world has gone missing, and you are this nobody that doesn't have an identity at all that gets his uh, his gets his uh, wand or whatever like that or finds his wand, mm-hmm. and then like through like like fighting things he like develops like different kinds of skills like here he's like a muscly you know bodybuilder but like in other times he's like a ranger uh you can even unlock it like and play as a knight or even a horse like these are all like different characters you'll be able to play as uh, and like switch up between different classes so it's very cool i'm i'm actually really stoked on this game <laughs> the horse uh, with the crossbow was another uh one of the screenshots i was seeing <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a horse but he's not like I think the bow is just like hovering in front of him because, yeah. you know, he's using all four of his legs to walk like, you know, a normal horse. <laughs> right. But somehow he has this magical bow that shoots. I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. That's oh, super cool. Nice. Yeah, there's a lot of them that have got that, got that cartoony. Like there's a there's Death Door. I know we're skipping Loot River right now, but Death Door. Oh, wait a uh, minute. Hold on. You're going to mess up my screenshots here. I do apologize. I'm sorry. You want you, you don't want to talk about Loot River? We'll talk about Loot River. I, I, sorry, I don't okay. want to skip that over. So Loot River, Looks cool. let's go back there, is going to be a roguelike uh, dungeon crawler that creates uh, massive labyrinths for for players to explore. So um, it's it's kind of in the vein of uh, like a Dead Cells where it's creating you know a brand new environment for you to jump into every single time. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's going to be really interesting me- uh, mechanism with combat. So not only is it real time combat where you're you know you know either shooting spells off or you're fighting with a weapon uh there's also block shifting and it's really hard to like visualize just based upon those words Mm -hmm. but i would recommend just checking out loot river go to like youtube type it in and just watch the trailer for it and you'll see exactly what i'm talking about because you'll literally shift the ground that you're standing on while in combat so like it plays like to a completely different kind of style like you can avoid combat completely or you can like you know, if you've got a boss on one side and you're on, um, you know, on a different platform, you can slide into that platform on your current platform, uh, hit the boss, and then back out. Like, in you can like, you know, it's really cool. So it sounds interesting. It, I like the graphics yeah. a lot too. It kind of reminds me of like an '80s point and click adventure, yeah, kind of thing. Like, uh, it's just it's kind of pixelated, but it just it looks really cool. I just, yeah, I think the art style is awesome. Yeah, I definitely dig the stylized look there. And then uh, there's going to be plenty of enemies, tons of loot. And as you can see, this is probably a boss. Uh, I mean, I can't imagine it being just a regular enemy. No, that definitely uh, looks like a boss. Right, for sure. So, um, you know, there's going to be spells, leveling up. So it's going to have a lot more features than just your regular, you know, roguelike game where, you know, you're going to have, you know, a character that you improve upon. And it's not just like, a, you know, HP or, you know, like a, a weapon you unlock or something. So this sounds like there's going to be more to the game than uh than just a regular roguelike so i'm looking forward to this one this one's also coming soon uh to both xbox and pc so i'd imagine this is probably going to be one of the games that it's also going to be a day one loot runner show me the loot (laughs) all right and then uh this one we've got next is i'm I'm excited for this death's door yeah Yeah. so uh kind of also in the set that what i was gonna say is kind of in the same kind of vein of being very cartoony and artistic uh death's door features you as a as a raven because i guess the ravens are grim reapers in this world because i i guess Makes for some sense. reason yeah right it does totally uh because the the trailer has the raven like taking like the city bus to go home <laughs> and like go to work it's really weird but uh weird. i yeah but i'm very interested in this i guess like no one in this world dies naturally and i guess during one of your missions to like you know go capture a soul or to like bring that soul to rest like someone steals that soul and so now you're tasked with going into this hmm. crazy world where nothing dies naturally uh and so i don't know it, it gave me vibes as the uh the one two before where we we're talking about nobody saves the world mm-hmm. kind of cartoony kind of like a little bit more playful and colorful uh but very excited for this game what did you think buddy yeah no i i like it i didn't know all those details i didn't do my homework like you did but uh all the things you said sound really interesting and exciting uh and just graphically i thought this looked like something i wanted to check out um and i will as soon as it's on game pass hopefully yeah yeah yeah. hopefully day one right (laughs) uh okay Uh, this one has been on my radar for quite a long time yeah because this one got announced i think back in like 2018 or 2019 it's been a while uh and but it's very interesting so it's called 12 minutes 
and uh, it's an interactive thriller, and it's got huge names in it: James McAvoy, Daisy yep. Ridley, uh, William Dafoe, and yep. basically you're playing a character. I love time loops. I'm sorry. Yep. You play a character <laughs> stuck in a time loop, trying to escape, and I think it's 12 minutes, probably right, because that's what yep. it's called. Uh, right. But like someone comes to your door and like kills you and your wife, basically, I think is the premise. And you have to figure mm-hmm. out how to make that not happen. Right. Which is just insane. And the graphics yeah. are really they look really, really awesome. But it's yeah. a t- it's a top down perspective. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited to see because it looks like it all takes place in this one room. It does. Yeah. From all from the from the scenes that I've seen of this game so far, it's it's just specifically over top this one room. So I'm very interested. Oh, it might be their whole like apartment because so there might right. be a couple other rooms, but it's a very small apartment. Yeah. And uh, I'm very excited to see how creative they are with, you know, that room. And if it only takes place in this apartment or room, uh, how what they'd have to do to, like, get you to be able to play this for, you know, six hours or something like that. Right. It's got to be really innovative. So exciting. Yes, very exciting. And I love the voice actors. Like, those are huge names. So Right. You've got, uh, you know, James McAvoy, the, the you know, Charles Xavier, you know, before going bald and everything else. You know, he played, you know, Charles Xavier there. Uh, Daisy Ridley, obviously, with uh, Star Wars, the most recent th- uh, three trilogy. Mm-hmm. And then Willem Dafoe, I mean, Fuck. What can't you say about Willem Dafoe? Come on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyways, that it, overall, I think it was a successful event. They showed quite a lot of uh, games and a lot of stuff to be excited for uh, across a bunch of different genres. So uh, if you haven't seen it and you want to, go check it out. It's uh, You can just YouTube uh, I, ID and then at symbol, like email, Xbox. And uh, you can watch the whole presentation there. And actually, they, ha- they interview a bunch of developers and they... Yep. Uh, have a bunch of special gameplay s- things. It's not just like a short stream. It's like an actual program. Uh, so it's pretty cool. So check that out. Let's quickly move things through to the Shooter Roundup. <laughs> Roundup. Roundup. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, what do we got here, Justin? We got one so- quick, simple, or one quick Shooter Roundup. Yeah, really we'll quick here. Up. Yeah, so this is more of a news bite kind of story, but it fits under the shooter roundup. So Overwatch introduced its final Overwatch League skins, which is kind of sad. Um, those have always been really cool. They've always been based upon, you know, the winners of, you know, the previous season. So, you know, this one was Roadhog. So they introduced Roadhog. Roadhog. Uh, Roadhog, man. <laughs> uh, as uh, Midas. And absolutely, I bought this immediately. This is a skin that I would not. How much? Would not miss on. Uh, it's uh, it's it's not important. Uh, <laughs> so twenty bucks? No, it was less than that. It was okay. less than that. But the, I mean, the hair is on fire. It's so cool, and it, like it, it's like legit fire. He it, does like, look cool. I'm looking at it in our notes. So for our patrons, you can get access to our uh, for three dollars a month. You can also, get, along with a lot of other things, you get access to our notes too, so you can see that there, or you can just yeah. Google image search it. Yep. Yep. Uh, but he's awesome. Uh, so that, I, I had to pick that up. And then um, they also introduced a good a good versus evil Echo uh, skin that's also inspired here from the Overwatch uh, League. But again, it's really sad. They're, they've done a few different uh, skins based upon the League and winners. And it, this one, unfortunately, again, it's going to be the last. So they really didn't give a definitive reason of why this was going to be the last one. Um, but fans, I guess, have speculated this has actually do with allegations of uh, some some abuse surrounding Sinatra and his, his former ex girlfriend. Um, yeah, I know, super boo. Because uh, Blizzard had previously made a skin to commemorate his MVP of 2019 before he re- retired from Overwatch to do uh, Valorant. Uh, but yeah, he you know they made uh, like a Men in Black uh, sci fi Zarya, uh, and they're actually offering refunds for it now just based upon this. So wow. that's what a lot of people are speculating. That's why. But again, I could also see it just being. Simply, they need to put more time and effort into, you know, Overwatch 2 and getting that ready. So maybe this is, you know, kind of taken away from, you know, fully being able to design for that game. So there's mm-hmm. a lot of things that it could be, you know, could be a factor there. But, you know, who I, knows? I, I, yeah, who knows? Only Blizzard knows. Yep. And they ain't talking. <laughs> yeah. They'll but talk check to out us. those new skins. We'll call yeah, them right. Up. 
Yeah. What's going on? We'll get them on the phone. What's the story here? (laughs) Yeah. Give us the sitch. (laughs) All right. Well, that's all we've got for you guys this week. Remember, Super Joystick Radio is a weekly show, so please subscribe and leave a review on your favorite podcast application. iTunes. iTunes. (laughs) (laughs) Become a patron at patreon.com slash superjoystickradio. $1 $1 gets you early access to the audio version of the show. $3 uh, gets you exclusive access to the show notes, as I mentioned or tried to before. Uh, and you also get access to the SGR Banter Archives, which is a huge collection of stuff that's been cut from before, during, and after past shows. Uh, and then $5 also gets you the previous perks, plus a Discord badge on our awesome Discord server, which we'll plug in a minute. And a mention on the show, shout-outs right now to our $5 patrons, Phil Lynch, Joe Halder, Rob Vilchunas, Nick, last name not specified, Caitlin, Chrissy, Justin D. Hello. Maddie Debs, C Fresh, and Jay Schmed. Lucio, man! Nice. All tiers also get discounts in the merch store where you can find things like the beautiful tapestry hanging up behind Justin right now. A gigantic... King size bed size is, is that correct? Yeah, it's a it's about a it's it's a tapestry. It's a it's about one foot shy of being a uh, full length of a, a king size bed. I think you can get it in bigger sizes, but I was like, well, I'm just at a that closet. That seems large just, enough to me. It is. It is. <laughs> is it heavy enough to use as a blanket? Could it keep you warm? No, it it is definitely like flag material. So all right, if you it, plan it w- to be out in the desert or something, and you <laughs> think that you can use this as a blanket, that has been confirmed that you cannot. You will yeah. die. There is a blanket, I believe, on the store, so you could just oh, buy get the, the blanket. blanket. Yeah. yeah, and there's also pillows, too. You could just get pillows and a blanket. There you go. And don't you dare hang up that <laughs> uh, blanket as a tapestry, because it's not. Yeah. You have to buy no. both. <laughs> 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 All right. Anyways, you can get discounts on the merch store. Uh, every level of patron gets a different value of discount percentage off. Uh, so check that out. Follow us on Twitter at S Joystick Radio. Follow us on Instagram at Super Joystick Radio. Subscribe on YouTube for Let's Plays and Streams. Uh, sub to our Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash superjoystickradio. Every week we've been streaming on Twitch uh, the live version of this show. So uh, we'd love for you guys to jump in and uh, be part of the chat. So we've had a really good response today. Thank you guys, everyone in the Twitch chat. Uh, we love having you here and having you be part of the conversation. It definitely makes things even more fun. Yes. Thank you. Yep. Uh, All right, visit superjoystickradio.com for all of our social media links, the merch store, as I mentioned, uh, and you can join the Discord channel, uh, sorry, join the Discord server channel on there. Uh, Shout out right now to the awesome Discord people that are on our server talking about all things video games and not video games, like not safe for work memes, and even what they're cooking for dinner every Mm, night, which is is actually fascinating because we have people from uh, all over the world uh, that are sharing different things. We've got some friends up in Canada. We've got some fr- a friend in Ireland. Uh, so it's really fun to, for me to see those kinds of, you know, different meals and things that they're making. Not well, video game uh, related, but fun. Right, right. Us. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and then also just want to plug here, obviously, uh, you know, we try to get together here Wednesday nights around 8 p.m. Central uh, for, you know, get to uh, get get together and again here check out uh you know if you want to you know send me a uh, message on discord uh and claim a time i'd be happy to take you through a little bit of the uh the friend pass version with uh it takes two yes and, yeah do some overwatch or some uh, rocket league or you know whatever we want to play let's uh let's get together and let's uh have a good time be it's all justin's about friend yes <laughs> i need more friends we need more friends <laughs> All right, leave us a text. This one's important. Leave us a text or a voicemail via the SJR hotline, 630-551-8898. That's 630-551-8898. Justin's texting himself right now. Right now. The number. Uh, yeah, but no, it's super easy, and we just love to hear you guys, uh, hear your feedback or topic ideas on any platform. Like Absolutely. a great school birthday party, nobody leaves empty-handed. Here's your goodie bag for the week. Justin, what do you have for the good people? Yeah, so Dota's Dragon Blood. I talked about it last week here. Um, really enjoying the show. Like looking, like I think last week it hadn't released yet. It actually, just came out here this past Thursday. Um, but I, I remember talking about it last week and just mentioning that I was really excited for this uh, show. I've never played the game, but the show makes me want to play. Like it looks like the show is great. I'm really enjoying it. It's only eight episodes long, about half an hour episodes. But if you're a fan of like you know Netflix's Castlevania, um, oh yeah. And, 
yeah, I mean, this this kind of falls in that same kind of category. I'm really excited for this. I'm excited for Cyberpunk when that that comes to Netflix as well, too. So really check this out. It's a really great one. If you're looking for sort of a high fantasy type of storyline, check it out. If you're a fan of the show, I guess there's tons of Easter eggs and tons of, uh, you know, you know, game references. Uh, but, you know, even for people that like me never played it, and while I might not get the reference, it's still super enjoyable. So check it out. Yeah, and they're doing their job if it's making you want to play the game. So Yeah, for real. That's the point. Yes, yes. All right. Mine is uh, Fake Famous. It's called Fake Famous, not a Fake okay. Famous. Fake Famous, which is a documentary on HBO Max. Okay. And basically, uh, it's an experiment following three normal, like, small-time Instagram users with the intention of blowing them up to see if they can get them to become real-life influencers. And the results are disturbing uh, and variable so there's a lot of things that they didn't plan on happening that are interesting Uh, so I would say check it out it's there's some fucked up shit in there but uh, for the most part it's I don't know it could be a waste of time for you I'm literally gonna go watch it right now. That Are sounds you right something now? amazing. Yeah, literally. I'm gonna go get once we're done with the show, I'm I'm out. I'm gonna go watch it with my wife. All That's right. something well, she would totally be into. Oh yeah, well it was my wife that uh, told me about it, but it's interesting. I don't know. This world's kinda of fucked up. Social media's kinda of fucked up, but we are glad that you're finding our show on it, so keep yes. using it. <laughs> All right. That's all we've got for you guys. Thanks for listening. We love you, and we'll see you next week. See you later.